Welcome to the first video of chapter two. Chapter two, we are gonna start with relations and functions. Two things you're gonna learn in this first video, like you'll see at the top. We will learn how to identify if a relation is a function, and we will use function notation. We're gonna jump in by explaining what a relation is. A relation is a mapping or pairing of input values to output values. Okay, you've seen this before. Input, what we mean is x values. Output, mean, output, we mean y values. So for, we're looking for points x and y. So a relation, there's an input, there's an x, there's an output, there's a y. So along with a relation, we need to be able to figure out how to find the domain and range of a relation. The domain is the set of the input values. In this case, all of the possible x values. Our range then is our set of output values. Again, in this case being y values. I'm gonna cross out these hints for you. And then for a function, something is a function when it's a relation where there is exactly one output for each input. So every x has exactly one y. So we're gonna do some examples together down below. So in green, you see, you should be able to identify the domain and range of a relation, and that's a skill you're gonna use throughout the year. So we have examples one and two. We need to determine the domain and the range. If we look at example one, the domain, again, these are the x values, the input values. In this case, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, and one. We put this in brackets to show that it's a set that goes together. The output, the range values, so output, range, y, those all go together. In this case, we can see in example one, these are our outputs. So zero, two, four, six, eight. To determine if this is a function, so looking above, there's exactly one y for each x. So we need to look for each x, does it go to exactly one y? Yes, yes, this is a function. So you may be saying, well, what happens that, what happens that we have two x values or two input values that go to six? Doesn't matter. So for it to be a function, x cannot have two y's. If a y has two x's, that's okay. What we care about though is every x has only one y. Okay, so then if we look at the next example, example two, our domain again is our x's. In this case, the top row. So we have two, negative one, negative two, negative one, and two. In this case, negative one is repeated, so we don't really need to write it twice. Our range is all of those y values. So negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. If you can't make those brackets perfectly, that's okay. Just get as close to them as you can. And then is this a function? So we need to look at our x's. Every x has one y. In this case though, we're gonna see we have same x, different y's though. This is not a function. Not a function because we have the same x value has two different y values. So again, does x repeat? That's the biggest question. Does every x have only one y? So that's the basic idea with relations and functions. So if you could skip to the next page, we're gonna talk about linear notation and function notation. Okay, for linear notation, linear notation is always gonna have a y equals. So you might see something like y equals x plus one, or you might see y equals negative x squared plus three x minus four. Those are linear notations. So what's important 
is this y. Function notation, on the other hand, uses f of x. So you would see f of x equals x plus 1, or f of x equals negative x squared plus 3x minus 4. So the big difference between the two is the y and the f of x. That f of x refers to a function, f. So it's telling us that our relation is actually a function, and it's a function in terms of x. We normally call this f of x. So x is your input and f is your output. You input for x, f is the output. We're going to use this notation to evaluate. So looking at example 3, here is our notation. We are evaluating when x equals 3. So we are plugging in 3 for x. So we say f of 3 is equal to Everywhere we see an x, we're going to put a 3. So 3 squared plus 4 times 3 minus 1. So we get 9 add 12 minus 1. 9 add 12 is 21. Minus 1 is 20. So what this is telling us is when x equals 3, f is equal to 20. And you think of f like y. Okay, a different notation that you're going to see is an example 4, f of 2. So remember, we're saying f is a function of x. What this notation is telling us then is that x equals 2. x equals 2. So in this case, if I'm looking for f of 2, I'm plugging in 2 everywhere I see an x. I'm going to get 4 plus 8 minus 1, so that's 12 minus 1 is 11. So we say f of 2 is equal to 11. So when x is 2, f is 11. When I input 2, my output is 11. Okay, last example here. We are finding g of negative 5 and g of 2a. g of negative 5, I'm plugging in a negative 5 for x. So I get negative 3 times negative 5 plus 4. So I get 15 plus 4, which is 19. Okay, so for g of 2a, what this notation is saying is in place of x, we're putting a 2a. So negative 3 times, instead of x, we're replacing it with 2a. So negative 3 times 2 gives us negative 6a plus 4. Those are not like terms, so you do not want to combine them. I neglected to mention here, in this case, g is the same as f. We just used a different letter. So I hope this video was clear. If you have any questions, please make sure you write them down and bring them to class tomorrow. When you come to class, we'll be doing some examples.